welcome to the Boiler Dan One Network. And my motto is, I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing. And I'm about to start a new project. Many of you know that I've been building small model ships for over a year now. This one is called Carolina Girl 3. And on my left is Brandy's Love of the Sea. I really enjoyed putting these together and adding different parts and pieces to them taking a basic simple kit and turning it into something special. Well, I hope to do that again. I'm about to build the HMS Victory. And much like these, this is just a um, inexpensive kit that I hope to be able to turn it into something special. Now, this being the first episode, I'm gonna complain this one time and never again in any, any of the rest of the series. This came in this small packet, which that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. This is a sale material I'm probably not going to use, but it, I always keep things like this because it can come in handy. I can make what looks like a tarp, a miniature tarp out of this. It looks like an aged burlap. Something that I won't use for its intended purpose are these, and this is the, uh, the planking material. I have some black walnut that I'll use, which will work much better than this. Some of the things that I tend to replace, and actually I just noticed that this particular one mask is split or broken right there. I like to use oak for uh, a lot of the masks and those things. So it does come with a supply of those. Same thing with the threading, this is fuzzy and not good quality so I'm not going to use that but what I am excited about are the bones of the ship itself so here's what I'm going to start with this will give me an idea of the ship's length okay that is about 13 inches so it'll be a little longer because the, uh, the masting that comes out this way I think that's a bowsprit I believe so we're probably looking at 16 to 18 inches total length of the ship. It's going to be hard to get all the little pieces and parts in. But this will give me the framing. Each one of these will connect into this. This is another sheet of similar things. And then what I'm very happy with but I'm going to have to be very careful, is the laser cut parts and pieces. I'll have to be very careful in cutting these out so that they don't actually break. But I have a lot of experience. I've built probably 15 of these small ships. Now this, I will use parts of, and let me go back. You may have seen across here that there are the cannons. Well, they're going to be square cannons, and I want round. And I've been playing around with a miniature lathe that I recently received as a Christmas gift. And I think I'm going to be able to use these bases and wheels, and then on my lathe, make miniature cannon barrels. And I think you'll see that they turn out pretty well. I've been working on them a little bit, so... We'll do that within the build. You don't necessarily have to if you're following along. Then, doing some research, I've got some ideas on this intricacy, how to possibly paint this, paint it black, and then do a, well, I shouldn't say paint it. I'm not gonna paint anything. I'll either stain it and see how that looks, or I will rub black acrylic paint on that so it's a rub into the actual wood gives a much smoother finish then over that kind of a dull black then i'll do a rub of a, an acrylic gold that has a very neat effect so i'm thinking of doing that on this back portion of the ship so we'll see how that goes in the future so again all these are laser cut my initial plan is for each one of these windows to actually have a cannon barrel sticking out of it you can uh, make it so that the, the cannon openings appear closed, but I think I want them all open with all the cannons showing. It's going to be quite the task, 
I hope you'll join along in this venture. I'm not sure how many episodes there will actually be, but let's go ahead and uh, I'll start the first with this unboxing and what you get in the kit. Again, the instructions are terrible. I'm going to have to figure out a lot of things on my own. I hope my experience will help in that. We'll see. And you can follow along in the journey. This was the inexpensive version. I've seen it priced anywhere from about $35 up to 60, well, some even more. So you have to be very careful. This, I happened to jump on it when it was, I think the $35 range, the most I paid was 39. And I'm not gonna go with much painting. I prefer stain over paint. Uh, so I will not be an authentic build as far as the coloring of the ship. I've seen some that are kind of a bright yellow and black and browns. I want it to look uh, more of a, a mahogany stain. So that's what I'm going to go with. Let me take some time and figure out what colors I want to pre-stain some of this. And if I want some of it to be painted and get to the point where I'll start putting the bones together in this first episode. Before I do any staining, I remove whatever items I'm working on, and this is obviously the framing. It's very important that you remove any nubs left from the pattern that these came out of. So after you take it out, it's a little bit tedious task, but just take a, a small file and gently sand that smooth, or file that smooth. You could use sandpaper too doesn't take much and I use just a light touch and then there also may be one in here wherever those connections were and I don't know if you can see but there is a small one right in there and that can be all the difference in a piece fitting smoothly or not now I may end up having to sand more to get these pieces to go together I want them snug but I also don't want to break anything putting it in place. So actually I've finished all of these. Then the ones that are smaller like this, I cut this out and left it in place because I want to keep it as a group. Some of the pieces have the markings actually on the piece. That's very helpful. But when you get into some of the others, let's see if I have an example here. Okay, here's an example. This is actually part number 50, but it's on the holder. So once you cut that out, you're not gonna know that it's part 50. So that's why I kept that together. So if I do end up staining this in this holder, then when I remove it, I simply take and go around the edges after I sand that nub off and I'll outline the edge. It would be similar to this edge and then I will make that black because these parts normally don't show this won't show but there is a possibility that this small framing member here will show so that's why I will stain or paint this part up here prior to even putting it together step one in the instructions will be the very back of the ship and there are parts 25 through 27. What is important is when you put these in, because the wood is going to have to curve around on that, it needs to have an angle on the back side. And I'm not going to show it on these particular pieces, but I will show it on the very next piece. And that's going to be number one half. So it starts with one half and then goes to one. And the edge I'm talking about, this back edge, because the wood, you're going to want to have an angle or curve, you need to file that off. Now you can do it painstakingly by hand, or in my case, I have this little sander. And I'm just going to give you an idea what I'm talking about. On the back side of where the number of the part is, I'm going to kind of bevel that off. I'm 
I'm hoping that you can see. Actually, I'll give you a close-up here in just a second. You see how I've started to bevel that? I won't take it all the way to the edge, but fairly close. And I just eyeball it, to be honest with you. See, there's the original edge, but I'll continue and do that on all those pieces where the actual curve of the planking is going to have to make a sharp turn. Okay. I've finished the beveling, and you don't do it with all of them. I just did number one half, and on the back side, because I'm going to have these sit with the numbers facing forward, you do the back side, and I beveled one half through number five and then the center of the ship doesn't need beveled. Then when you get to the front, they have to be beveled. But again, I'm going to go uh, this time because they set like this with the number facing forward, so I'm gonna bevel the front edge where the number is. And with those, I started with 15 and went all the way up to the end here, which is number 20. 20 is where I ended. There's some other little pieces in there. I may or may not have to bevel those. Just wanted to make you aware of that before I go to the next step, which I think I can stain the parts of these that I want. It's going to take me a little bit of time to get the parts stained that I want before I can start assembling this, uh, the, the bones of the ship, as I'll call it. So I'm going to end this segment one, and I'll pick that up with segment two. I'll be out of town for a week or so, so uh, don't expect a real quick follow-up video, but I will continue this process when I get back from my short vacation. As always, thanks for watching.